Hey guys, Lindsay here. Not at Carter Vintage today. Right now we are on the road in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania at the Artisan Guitar Showcase. We're gonna go inside and try out all the guitars, interview the luthiers, and promote the Carter Self from Workshop side of things. Got the little postcards here. So let's go inside. All right, now I'm here with Laurent Brandel. Laurent, thank you so much for chatting with me today. Hi, very nice to meet you too, yeah. We just met. Some folks out there might know that I actually own one of your guitars. It's my main instrument. So this is, as I was just telling you, this is my fangirl moment to be like wow. the builder of my guitar. Okay, I'm intimidated <laughs> now. <laughs> Definitely no reason to be. Yeah, yeah, I am. <laughs> so what guitar do you have? I have the, I have an A2 Kokobolo Carpathian Spruce 2014. Okay. Yeah. So. Cool. Well, yeah. congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, well, let's chat a bit about the guitars that you have today. Um, yeah. yeah, just go down the line. This is a... I've never seen you do anything like that. That's wild. No, it's the first one I've done like this. So it's a new model I call the Renegade. And it's a very simple, very basic trim guitar. And I was thinking of trying to do something more affordable even than my Essential and uh, go with a very simple aesthetics and more of an electric guitar vibe, yeah. perhaps with the metallic finish on the top and on the peg head and also on the, on the heel cap, right? So just have fun with, uh, with that and try to build, uh, at least for, for my price point, uh, an affordable guitar, which seems almost grotesque to say, but it's, it's more affordable than the other ones, let's just say. So yeah, it's uh, my C4 model in terms of the shape. So it's a single O, 14 fret guitar, uh, German spruce top, Basta in walnut back and side, and black walnut neck, fretboard, and bridge. Yeah. Nitro so it was like her. So that's the OM18. Yeah, you guys, I think, had a bunch of those in the shop yeah. in the past uh, couple of years, maybe more. Uh, yeah, maybe three years, I think. I don't remember. Um, so yeah, it's my take on the traditional pre-war Martin OM thing with a little modern twist, like the pins are drilled in line with the saddle to prevent the, the cracking that uh, often happens there. Uh, it's a drop-in saddle instead of a through saddle, which makes it easier to change if uh, you want another action. Uh, no truss rod, just carbon fiber in the neck with compression frets uh, to keep the neck and the relief at a proper, uh, at a proper measurement. And uh, this is it. This is, uh, this is what, uh, what I do for an OM. Yeah. So that's an A2 model, so you know that. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, Brazilian back inside. All right, it's a cedar neck, uh, German spruce top. And, uh, we went a little fancy with the uh, decoration there. It's Buckeye Burl. So there's uh, you know, all the trim on the fretboard here around the top on the rosette and uh, Brazilian bridge and fretboard and uh, those Godot tuners which are I don't think you can make them smaller than that yeah, that's right? crazy I know but they're very light yeah. and so with the cedar neck it makes for a very light neck unit and uh, it changes the sound believe it or not interesting yeah, yeah. and then back here is that well, okay. that's a guitar I just took in trade before the show uh, for a friend of mine. I built her a new guitar and I took that in. And it's a guitar I built in 2009. And it's, uh, I messed up the neck joint here. So, you know, I don't know what happened, but there's a, there's a gap. Yeah. Right. So it's a tilt neck, it's adjustable. Okay, cool. Right. So on that guitar, you never change the saddle. You adjust the action by Ch changing the angle of the neck here and a uh, Carpathian spruce, Cocobolo and uh, yeah it's a 14 year old guitar yeah it's like uh, being with an old friend again oh yeah that must be so cool um, yeah I, 
because I have one of your guitars, and I mostly think of you as an acoustic builder, but I, yeah, you build really great electric guitars as well, like your Honeycasters, right? That's right, yeah, you guys had a bunch of those, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you know, I started doing that as, uh, I'm an electric guitar player mostly, I mean, I do play yeah. acoustic guitar, obviously, but, uh, so I started building guitars for fun, electric guitars for fun, electric guitars, like, you know, in the Fender style, because I'm a vintage freak in a way, I love those, those old guitars. And, uh, you know, I don't build many every year, it depends. But mostly a lot of my clients who build acoustic guitars also bought an electric guitar. Uh, and so, yeah. Yeah, so talking more about your guitar construction, um, generally I, I feel like I think of you as like sort of being, like you have a traditional style in some ways, but then like you do have, you do incorporate some more modern elements. And you also do radius tops and backs, which not yeah. everybody, well, I mean, I guess there's a certain amount of radius always but if you look at that guitar it, you can see the top is arched like five inches right and so it's a construction that uh, Stefan Sobel started doing uh, decades ago and I've always loved Stefan's work and, and uh, his guitars sonically aesthetically so um, I started doing this uh, literally not really to imitate Stefan, actually. That's the first guitar I built like this. Yeah, and it's uh, Rick Turner who passed uh, uh, recently. Uh, I was asking him about the tilt neck thing. I was like, yeah, I want to do that, you know, but I'm, I'm a little worried about the tension that that is going to pull on the, on the neck joint because it's not glued, right? Nothing is glued. Uh, it's all bolts. So Rick was like, well, since you like Stefan's work so much, why don't you do a notch top like he does, you know, in, the, in that style? I said, yeah, great idea. So that's, that's kind of the, of the thing. And uh, I did a few with that tilt neck, not many, uh, because I think people get frightened, right? Yeah, it's really non-traditional. I mean, you know, that guitar is 14 years old. It's perfectly fine, right? So... Uh, but I kept the, the, the top and back arch construction method uh, on the A2s, A1s, all, all my other guitars, you know. Yeah, I don't do it for the smaller guitars. Like, for example, this one has more of a flat top. Yeah. So I build the Martin style and the small guitars. When I get to the single O size, uh, you, you really have a narrow rim and it really constrains the top a lot. So I, I really want the top to be a little freer, right? So that's what I do. But on this one, you, you can see it's also arch. Yeah. Right. So you get a, kind of a Stratocaster uh, arm, yeah. you know, sort of thing there, which makes them a little more comfortable. Yeah. Gorgeous. Um, well, just some random questions. Um, what, what Do you have any favorite tone woods to work with, or are you pretty open to everything? Uh, I'm pretty conservative in the sense that, uh, I mean, yeah, there are a lot of tone woods out there. They can be attractive, uh, but I tend to stick with what I know works. So I've built a lot of guitars with various tone woods. And I mean, I essentially do what customers ask me to do, you know. So if somebody wants a guitar made out of papier mache, I'm probably going to say no. Right? Right. Or if somebody asks me to make a guitar out of a back and side wood that I know is not necessarily going to go in the direction that the, the customer wants the tone to be, I'm going to say, well, maybe we should try that. Right. But I'm open to anything uh, as long as uh, I know it's going to work for the, the tonal uh, aspect of, of the build. So, but yeah, I use a lot of Brazilian mahogany. You know, this is a walnut guitar. I don't think I've built a walnut guitar since uh, 2007 or something, <laughs> you know. Uh, but I know walnut works. Uh, but yeah, and for tops, you know, you got to use spruce or cedar if you want. Uh, or something. Do you build many cedar or redwood guitars? Well, I've built a few. They're out there. But actually, I built a whole guitar out of uh, that wood. Neck, back and sides, top, blocks, everything. Linings, yeah. Yeah, it was a commission from somebody in Singapore. Um, but uh, I, I tend to stick to spruce, really, you know. Classics. 
Yeah, I mean, if somebody orders a guitar with a cedar top, I'll do it, sure. Um, and this is kind of a hard question to ask because I've found from other luthiers, but is there like a dream musician who you would either like to build for or who you have built for who you feel like would really be a great representative of your, your guitars and your sound? Well, I'm a big fan of Eric Johnson, so I would love to build an acoustic guitar for Eric. Actually, I'll, I'll give him one someday. But uh, yeah, there are a lot of musicians I like. Most of them are dead, though, so... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, but I love Michael Hedges. I love Pierre Ben uh, but Pierre uh, has a long, long, long relationship with with Loudon. Uh, but he's a great, he's a great guitar player. Yeah, I feel like that would be a yeah. I could imagine him playing your guitars. And, oh yeah, he has, he has many times. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He's been, he's, yeah, he's been very kind. But uh, yeah, but, uh, but he's got his Loudon. So yeah. So who else? Who else? I love Martin Simpson. You know. It seems like he gets guitars from everybody at some point. I think he's a guitar lover, so yeah, you know, I mean, when you love guitars, you, you know. Well, in the, in the workshop, are you a podcast, silence, or music person? Well, I used to listen to medieval music, uh, but uh, it's very distracting, so I tend to listen to podcasts, yes. Interesting, yeah, I feel like certain kinds of work dovetail nicely with with podcast, people talking, telling stories. Is there anything that you're really into right now? Uh, I listen to a lot of podcasts uh, relating to history, philosophy, things like that. Trying not to listen too much on the news because uh, we live a crazy, crazy time. It's the best time, it's the craziest time. So, you know. Uh, I don't think humans have, have had it better any any time in history, yeah, and yet we are here driving each other crazy. So. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's the paradox. Like, yeah, best time in history, but yeah. yeah. So yeah, mostly mostly history of thought. I'm interested in that, uh, and sometimes I put loud music when I'm doing repetitive work or something that doesn't require necessarily 100 percent of my attention. I'm gonna put some loud music in there. Yeah. Cool. Um, well, where can folks find you online if they want to learn more about your work? Uh, LaurentBrondel.com and uh, they can find my Instagram uh, link there and that's pretty much all I have. Nice and simple. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.